Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fan Behavior and F1 Podcast. I'm Zoe, back with Hannah. Hey. Hannah and I are not intentionally dressed in the merchandise of the DNF, I guess, Joe also DNF'd, well, but the, but the first red DNF. flag DNF boys. Yeah, Hannah's got her Enchanté shirt on. Mm-hmm. I have my AA23 hoodie on. Thank you to them for sending us the wonderful merch. Yeah, um, sad nice. to have to wrap it on this day. Yeah, you know? it just worked out. And I did, um, I laughed because I actually almost put on my AA23 t-shirt, which mm. is the same colorway as your sweatshirt. And um, well, I'm glad I didn't because it we, worked out. We show up matching all the time and we're just... Um, Co- cohesive that's what tanya rod would say is that we're cohesive we're always cohesive i know yeah i mean i shouldn't say always but there's I would a say eight out of ten times eight out of ten yeah. yeah exactly i mean i think we actually probably should um ahead of miami we probably need to figure out like oh yeah sometimes like when we were in austin it was like oh this is kind of fun yeah mary Kay like, nashley moment also like <laughs> 30, 30. <laughs> Like when is does it when is it not appropriate? Like what's the age that you're not allowed to be cohesive with your friend? We're gonna be like sixty at like um some race. We're gonna be going yeah. to some race when we're re- retired. We're gonna be like we're matching. I Mary think it's fine. Ashley. I think it's yeah, okay. But see, I do think I think actually when you get to that age, it becomes okay again. Yeah, you know, that's probably true. Back to yeah how you were when you were a child. That's so, probably true. Um. Anyway, um, how was your week? A uh, week was good. I told um, Zoe before we started recording. Um, I, I'm not a, um, I'm a clumsy person. I was gonna say I don't know what the opposite of clumsy is. Graceful, which my my name means um, graceful one or something like that. But no. Um, so I fell up the stairs this week with a glass of red wine in my hand, and there's carpet on those stairs, and so that was um, the the valley of my week for yeah. sure that that comes to mind. Um, but other than that, you know, it was just Living the same. Yeah. yeah. So we have a race to discuss this week. We do. Um, well, how was your week? Oh, it was fine. Um, but nothing to report. Nothing too crazy. Um, I'm deep in. Wh- when we this, live wild lives. When this comes out, it'll have already happened. But I'm deep in college basketball, specifically mm. women's mm-hmm. college basketball. Yeah. It is excellent. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I feel like really, and maybe it's just we're all paying attention or more closely paying attention, but I really just feel like the last 12 months has just been like the year of the woman. Yeah. Like with Barbie, with like the Taylor Swift tour. Totally. Like people are actually putting respect on, you know, female athletes, Mm -hmm. women's sports, um, breaking records left and right. Yeah. Like it just... It feels good. And yeah. then you have Formula One, you know? Which sure. Is- <laughs> and I think it's interesting because we talked about it this week, but the conversation we had on the pod last week about um, mm. the yep. my foe of the um, yep. NASCAR driver who threw part of his car on another car and how a woman could literally never do that and have it be funny. Um, it popped up a lot in uh, women's college basketball this yes. week, as yes. it should have, because it's absurd. It is absurd. And just, and I like... Sorry, she's passionate. Let women be... Let athletes them, or let, <laughs> let them talk smack that's what i want to say like yeah. it's not like you have to be perfect just let them live um, man america's sweetheart that's very like old school mentality of like oh the famous the famous female athlete is the one that like is really pretty and really mm-hmm. you know it's like the window is so um or so difficult for like a female athlete to break through because they have to have like that perfect combination yeah. of all the qualities yeah but it's like, let's look at the men that are famous athletes. Like, right. you know. like we, like the, um, I don't know what, what her name is. I'm not familiar with a lot of sports broadcasters, but she was just saying, we don't have a segment talking about when male athletes oh, yeah. like have a moment because yes. it, it happens, happens all of the time. Like we, we wouldn't be able to have a segment because it happens in every game that exists. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, um, good times to be had all around. Um, also I'm- one random sidebar about sports. Yeah. Did you see the French diver who fell during the opening ceremony of no, Oh, bless him. Never mind. Okay. I was also going to say on the sports train, um, I had, I shared a story to our Instagram about Chelsea winning and a lot of people didn't, I think a lot of new people were not aware of oh. 
my Chelsea fandom, mm-hmm. um, and it stirred up a lot of um, controversy. Yeah, interesting. And, well, I, I, I shouldn't that's say how the Premier League but, is, but like you know, some people are like, oh my god, you're a Chelsea fan. Other people, oh my god, Ew, you're, you're a Chelsea, Chelsea fan. fan. Yeah. Um, what does this mean going yeah. forward? You know. So I guess I need to come out and say, yeah, I I am a Chelsea fan. Um, it is and, in fact on behind her right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they score. The, the the reason why I post that because they scored two goals in about the last five minutes of the game oh, to wow. win the game to beat Manchester United, which, was a, big a, deal. which was a big deal yeah, yeah. For, for all involved. So yeah. anyway, that, I did watch some of the Arsenal game yesterday. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hannah's a, Hannah's an Arsenal fan. Yeah. <laughs> in quotes. If someone asks who I support in the Premier League, it's we Arsenal. We went through a but. whole thing last year. Um, trying to find Hannah's team. And, and I do think it is your team. It is it's my just, team. I just don't. so much you can handle. I, 100%. I just right, don't partake. Right. So if that's a problem for you guys in terms of, uh, in terms of our allegiance, then, you know. We still love I you. Mean, I, <laughs> apologies here. And also don't feel, you. Sh- it, it shouldn't be because, well, I guess maybe in the case of Arsenal, they could win the title this year, but Chelsea sucks this year. So, you know, it's like, there's there's no need to be upset yeah no big deal um okay let's get into some of the news and stuff that happened before the race weekend shall okay, we please um so i think you know people did message us that we have some sort of psychic power i don't think we actually do but okay. lewis being on the cover of gq mm. uh, people were like you know you guys now really what we should be talking about is why was it yuki on a magazine cover mm-hmm. and i think it's just like complete and total disrespect all i mean not only was it his home race but he's been serving the looks, looks. yeah like now i will say the the cycle of a magazine he maybe wasn't serving looks soon enough mm-hmm. you know to be on a cover that aligned with suzuka sure. that's true but the year isn't over the year is there not is over. still time and i would just urge all involved uh, in japan who maybe own a mag i'm sure we have many magazine owners who listen to totally our podcast. Owners, editors, editors, photographers. Um, just you know, if you're in, in that play pitch, your part pitch meeting, who do we want on, on the cover this this month? I think we can just throw out his name and mm-hmm. get it, you know, get it going. Because as we'll talk about, he really is a hometown hero yeah. and uh, deserves deserves that kind of recognition. Um, but Lewis on the cover of GQ, Slade, Slade. I did want to highlight one particular part that I thought was just very apropos Mm -hmm. as people would say um he was talk he talked a lot about you know uh fashion he talked a lot about wanting to be in movies he loved adam driver's ferrari so like you know game recognizes game um but then the interviewer asked him what's the thing you're most surprised hasn't evolved further during your time in formula one Mm. and he said quote we still need more women in the sport and to fight to make sure that there are more and more women to put out at the front in view for young women and girls to be able to see that this is a place for women close quote Clubs. <laughs> thank Snaps. you lewis hamilton for just continuing to walk the walk talk the talk hashtag ally hashtag ally. i literally wrote lewis on gq dot 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 ally <laughs> same <laughs> i've discussed uh, you know <laughs> earlier this week i'm very good at just writing down yeah <laughs> just just very pointed notes you know it's just in the corner (laughs) um another i think equally important thing to discuss is um charlotte claire's choice of pants yes in japan now i have no anywhere (laughs) (laughs) but specifically you know highlighting the one playing dance dance revolution (laughs) and okay so literally people were like what's going on what's happening here and i was like and Our i, I didn't say this outside out out outside out loud <laughs> I, did, I, said, I didn't go outside and say this i said this indoors <laughs> i said this is, is is exactly when people are like why do you love charlotte claire whatever like yeah. this is why unapologetic because he wears weird ass pants <laughs> playing dance dance revolution yeah no one else would ever like think of any other driver on the grid mm-hmm. no one's doing maybe yuki yeah but no maybe pierre but i don't know that he would the the pants certainly would yeah you do dance dance revolution oh no i don't you know it's the combination sorry i didn't know we were talking about the full package it's the combination we were about of the, the pants. two things and that is why he could never like i don't know it just i love it i would love to see a closet tour yeah. of the pants yeah oh totally did you see um james coker's reel that he did with it really did match up every song yes. and that's when i remembered that dance dance revolution is simply hopping on squares that light up right i mean it's it's just like a beat 
it's just a yeah. beat thing it so it can funny. it can light up with everything but but yeah again, the pant game is so unique so unique he wore them also to the track mm-hmm. um and so I they, just, it does look like he took a star shaped sponge and just like made his own and i what's wild is that he spent probably over a yeah, thousand no dollars on pants were, but yeah. said pants yeah, exactly there was also a video i saw and it was just like a, a fan video of him i think he was in monaco like getting in his car <laughs> and it was so weird because i didn't realize i mean oh, once he up, opened the door yeah. yeah but i didn't his girlfriend was on the other oh. side and she just like popped out, out of nowhere. nowhere i know I but know. i think and then i realized i was like oh she was grabbing the handle to open the door and he just hadn't unlocked but it, it was something. weird because you didn't see her approach the car well, it was I, like yeah. she was just boom there yeah it was just like <laughs> did she just up here like i know or maybe she came from the but i don't know it was just funny but i'm glad you kind of interesting too. that she um i i think they went to bali after australia mm-hmm. like they're in bali before they went to japan but i don't think she's been to any of the races this year yeah i guess i, I don't really seen. know i mean i we don't know i mean obviously we don't know we don't have like a direct line mm-hmm. to her to be like why aren't you at these races but yeah i wonder why maybe i also didn't just, realize that his ice cream shop is called lick yeah. which like when i just looked at it i think i was less, maybe listening to tg1f or someone that that said it out loud because i was like lick what like lec it doesn't make sense and then i was like no you say leclerc anyway lick. yep yep see he's genius well he didn't come up with it he is a genius um no i can't a- wait for the promo shots though of him promoting an ice cream shop 100 percent. i can't the pants wonder what they'll look like Ho- hopefully he has pants with ice cream cones yeah or they're like um painted like a neapolitan um oh, ice cream that's gallon. cool that's cool it's actually horrible but it would go with the branding he, he would, currently he would, has he would wear it yeah he would um no in all seriousness um about charlotte claire the special helmet he wore yeah. in honor of um jules who obviously well i shouldn't say obviously maybe people don't know that he um his godfather had an accident at suzuka 10 i think it was i think it was the 10-year anniversary mm-hmm. right um which unfortunately he passed away following the accident and so to honor him he had a really cool helmet which you know i i think i don't know i, I feel like people talk about how like um Charles is like doing what Jules never could do yeah. and like whatever, which I mean, hasn't, well, we'll get into his yeah. race weekend, but love the helmet. Thought it was very sweet. And, um, and I'm glad that, um, the weather was nicer in Suzuka this not time. Not raining yeah, and scary. I was thinking about that. Uh, what was it? 2022 mm-hmm. race. Yeah. That was stressful. Bleak as yeah, hell. Really scary. Um, it also came out and this is maybe part of a larger conversation, but I guess I'll bring it up now but I'm sure we'll get to it down the road. Um, it was announced. So obviously we know that uh, in Australia, Alex destroys his chassis. Then he drives Logan's car. I, I was like, what was that? It feels like it was a long time ago. It, but does. it, it was Australia, right? Yeah, it yeah. was. But with, there was a week in between. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they decide. So then they bring the repaired chassis back for Japan. But they say that Logan's going to be driving the repaired chassis and Alex is just going to stick with the one that he drove in Mm -hmm. Australia, which was previously Logan's. Logan's. Yeah. Now, obviously people were like, what the, like, what's going on? Disrespect is like crazy. Now to be fair, I guess to Williams, it does take, they have to like remove a lot of parts to then put back and forth. So to probably eliminate a lot of the back and forth, back and forth, they were like, let's just keep it how it is. Mm -hmm. But it is kind of like, okay, so he gets like the patched up, one yeah. and even though he did nothing to like get this it was it's just and I, I i have a whole thing about williams and just what's going on there but i don't feel like they've started out pr wise on the best foot and not no. really like it's not like terrible it's just optically things look a little off yeah <clears throat> yeah unfortunately for yeah them. the messaging feels much different than the end of last yeah, season right, exactly. where we're backing logan and all for one one for all yeah and it's it's hard because it's not that they're not doing that. It's just that like he's not getting chosen. He's getting picked last in the dodgeball game. You 100%. know, hundred percent. He he's he is <laughs> Meredith Gray going pick me, choose me, love me, and they're saying <laughs> and they're <laughs> sorry. They're, they're choosing Addison. Yeah, you know, um, I liked Addison. I liked her fine, but not not, not more than Meredith. No, right. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get more into their weekend later on. Uh, and then I just want to end on Oscar con- continuing to bring the jokes. Yeah. So he and Esteban did their little car 
toy racing thing or whatever <laughs> car toy racing i don't know also i was like where's lewis because he loves to do, do, do like they kind mm-hmm. of ignored him but well, maybe he said no maybe but he did it with esteban before like i feel like he's know. he's always down to maybe he was booked and busy he totally <laughs> <laughs> guys i'm booked and i'm busy yeah call back later look at me defending lewis we'll get into that later <laughs> I'm not like, accusing him of anything. I'm just curious why he wasn't there. No, I know. But, I just, but anyway, um, Alpine shared a photo of said thing, you know, interaction with Esteban and Oscar. And then Oscar commented and said, like, Alpine posted this with my permission. It's uh, so brilliant. I love him so I know. much. It's just also so happy good. birthday at Oscar. He's yeah. His HPD. Birthday. Um, I think he's 23 now. We, we yeah. Cause we had this conversation. Who's older mm-hmm. Oscar or, Logan um yeah I just I I love him I think he's so funny yeah he's just he posted like a series of pictures too of him on his birthday with his cakes mm-hmm. various cakes which I also appreciated and we love various cakes totally and like as a kid when you're when you have your oh I want this type of cake mm-hmm. you know we all I mean I shouldn't say we all I don't know some people maybe just got a generic oh, cake no. but I was very particular about you yeah, know did you get pictures on them and stuff hundred percent I had me a ham on my cake oh yeah we talked about this when I was like in second grade yeah um oh yeah I, I yeah I loved it I remember so distinctly I had a birthday cake um with Britney Spears on it, it was her oops I did it again cover mm-hmm. and um I made I like it was like my bowling alley birthday party. I feel like most people had one of those. I never did. Um, okay. So a lot of people, <laughs> just not Zoe. <laughs> and I demanded that I have her face. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And it same. was like the largest piece of, it was just dumb. Yeah. Or I, I think I actually, I, I was just, just um, looking over the, or last weekend, I was looking in, at some old, um, like family photo album things. And there was, it was that particular birthday um and i think i made everyone not i think i made everyone eat around the face and then we we, we could keep the face like mm. so make that last like longer I, why i don't yeah, know i don't it's know like we have to honor this queen yeah but of not course. in your face absolutely um let us know if you had anyone yeah please do those are always so much fun about, like if you were a kid now who you would like i was thinking about because obviously yeah i said like i've been into college basketball mm-hmm. and i'm like caitlin clark for me i oh, would have been yeah. obsessed with her because i also played basketball as mm-hmm. a kid and like she would have been like my idol i would have yeah. been obsessed and i would have probably been her for halloween like i was me and him for halloween i would have had her on my birthday cake yeah um but i was trying to think of other like icon like who i guess maybe i would have been obsessed with taylor swift i don't know I was yeah trying to think of other people i feel like um i w- like if I would have no, if I would have been younger when One Direction was sure, a thing, of course, for sure of course, that of course, if I course. was this like if I was young and a Formula One fan, probably Lando. Oh yeah, I mean I would have definitely had a Formula One birthday. Oh, oh that for been sure. So fun. Yeah. Damn. That's not too still, late. I know we, we, we could still do that. Yeah. But like totally, oh, totally. Yeah. I would have had. I mean, yeah. I guess I wouldn't have been like seven and been like put Daniel Ricardo on my birthday cake. Yeah. Maybe I would have. I probably like, would have. I don't know. I would have probably been more like lando or oscar or whoever yeah you aaron be- carter was on my birthday cake once. oh really i would just like take my um like the you know the album like the inserts from uh-huh. cds and whatever i was into that year would be on That's my birthday so cake mm-hmm. um yeah i just don't, i i don't know who like the kids are obsessed with like tiktokers i think i mean like seven-year-olds like olivia rodrigo maybe but i think it. i really do think a lot of it is like youtubers youtubers and stuff now. maybe yeah or like yes the power rangers there's no like young i, I know mean, I guess they really like, have like a bad Olivia rodrigo or like billy eilish or something but they don't have what we had and it makes me sad for them i mean they do they do in some way they don't have a justin bieber they don't have a justin bieber yeah correct not right now yeah I, and i was thinking about that too like and sorry this is off tangent or whatever but um you know like all the albums we've been getting like Ariana Grande, Casey Musgraves, yeah. Beyonce, we're getting Taylor Swift, we're getting Dua Lipa. I'm like, the girls are bringing it week and we, just mm-hmm. music, music, music. I'm like, where are the dudes? I don't know. They're non-existent. And then I, then I was thinking about like, there's just not a lot of like male pop stars out there. No, I mean, the, I guess Justin's album just dropped Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Well, I just, no, no, he, no, it did. no, it did, it did, it did. <laughs> but, but I mean like yeah. the young yeah, 20 something year olds, there's just not, really but I don't even know who those people are. It's like, Zach Bryan now and like no, Morgan that's what Wallen. I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's that, weird. It's, 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 there's like no pop star. I know. Um, anyway, I don't know how we got on the oh, because of birthday, birthday cakes. cakes. 
<laughs> Please let us know so, um, in the YouTube comments or, you know, DMs. I'd, and if you have photographic evidence of the cakes you had yeah. for inspo. I, I can try to find find mine and I'll, I'll share a picture. Um, not that anyone actually cares. I do. Um, okay. So on to the race weekend. So we had uh, just a couple of things. Um, there were two Japanese drivers on the grid for FP1. Ayumu Iwasa, um, <clears throat> who's in the Red Bull Junior. I actually don't know. He was in F2 last year. I don't know if he's in F2 currently. I think he is. Um, he and Yuki both, you know, they have to give up. And, and actually, somebody asked this, so I can I can answer this now. But people were asking if every driver has to give up their seat during the season for a young driver. And yes, mm-hmm. they do for at least one FP1 session. Uh, all teams have to have somebody. T- it's typically a driver in their academy program um, for to give them hours in the car, whatnot. But um, it was the first time that two Japanese drivers have been on the grid at the same time in like a very long time. Mm-hmm. So obviously fun for the Japanese fans. Yeah. Bad for Daniel and just continued to be a... But he didn't get to do FP1 and then it rained basically all of FP2. So he didn't get any... He got like five laps on inters on Perfect. FP2. So like by the time... Nailed it this weekend. Yeah, nailed it. Crushed it. Obviously not anyone's fault, but like not the best time for that to happen for him. But the the biggest thing that happened in practice that I want to talk about was that Logan crashed in FP1. I, I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, crashed. guys. I don't watch practice. No, it's okay. It's one of my flaws. A lot of people don't watch practice. Um, Logan crashed <laughs> in FP1. In the broken chassis. <laughs> in the broken chassis. And... They were basically like, he like took the curb kind of weird. Anyway, he kind of spun out, hit the wall or hit the, not the wall, but like the barrier thingy. And, um, the, it didn't destroy the chassis, obviously, cause he still raced, but he couldn't then, he did not get to do FP2, which ended up being fine. Cause most people didn't actually yeah. in FP2, but cause they had to fix the car. And it was just like, Oh my God. Like, you know, and this is what we said before with like the decision to, put alex in yeah. logan's car like i think he's just it's not it's lost bleak. his confidence like i, I just you know and then now and, and this is true like and every time he's gonna get in the car it's gonna be like don't crash the car don't yeah don't mess it like just so in his head yeah i do think they're gonna i think i've i've read that they are going to have a spare chassis for china so they've learned their lesson it's taken them a while and they're gonna need it because again <laughs> more destruction down the road <laughs> <laughs> potentially um no i mean there was with Alex. oh right right, um, right 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 but uh just i just was like god and, and like I, I find myself now like really rooting for logan mm-hmm. I, I want him to do well i yeah. feel bad for him i like it's just it's not it's not been going so so well for him um okay let's get to qualifying okay, okay so actually i have a my own little story about the experience for myself oh yeah so i Qualifying was on at 1 a.m., I think, mm-hmm. for us here in the States. And I wasn't planning to stay up for it. I was like, I'll just get up in the morning and watch it um, because I can't stay up till 1 a.m. to watch qualifying. So I fell asleep at like 11.30, 11.45. I literally it's so weird shoot awake at 1.30-ish. Like almost like – I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but like when you almost are like fully awake mm-hmm. – but you're, but you've only slept for a couple hours. You're like, yeah. how is this even possible? And why am I like totally awake? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. And I, I look and I'm, I see it's one thirty. I'm like, okay, well, I might as well just turn on <laughs> qualifying. I, <laughs> I literally turn it on, and it's <laughs> Q two, and I see Daniel's P ten, <laughs> and literally as I turn it on, Yuki bumps Daniel yeah. out, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> It's weird. It's like they someone in the universe wanted you to see it at, in real time. Wanted me to like you need to be yeah. upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I love Yuki. It's great. I mean, I'm yeah. It's not like I'm you know super, but I was just like, wow. Okay, that was funny. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, but then and and then I ended up watching the rest of it. So yeah, Daniel, like I think half a tenth, like point zero five seconds away from getting into q3 which would have been nice for him just like morale boost totally. to not only out qualify yuki but get into q3 like mm-hmm. that would have been great but i do think silver lining for him is he was very close like yeah so many of the other qualifying sessions he's had like he's just like not done well and right. for him to be like at least yeah close i think that's a win that's his only win of the week yeah um lance so aston martin brought a bunch of upgrades this week 
and uh, everyone was like, oh, okay, th- they're going to do well. Lance qualifies P16. He gets out in Q1. Fernando qualifies P5. Mm-hmm. And I just have to say, apparently, this is crazy. Yuki has outqualified Lance mm. every single qualifying session this season. I think that's true. I could be wrong about, I actually could be wrong about uh, Bahrain. So someone might, you can, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I once again asking for Fernando and Yuki to be teammates at, at Aston Martin. It's yeah. never going to happen. Uh, never say never. I guess never told say us never. That. And like the Aston or the, the Honda thing does provide a, you know, that. Well, provides an opportunity potentially for Yuki to be at Aston Martin. Yeah. Well, I did, so curious. I did read that Fernando's leaning towards re-signing with Aston Martin. Right. Uh, and he did say, he was like, well, we're doing better than Mer- like, cause someone asked him about the Mercedes seat and like, if he wants to go there and he's like, well, no, <laughs> we're doing better than them. Mm-hmm. Like Aston Martin. So like, why would I want to go to Mercedes? Which is like a bit of a dig. Um, so I think it's likely that it's going to be asked or it's going to be F- F- Fernando and Lance. But I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. my opinion on that will never change. Which is, why are you in the seat? Lance. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And But I know the answer. And I know, that's what I'm saying, but it just sucks because it's never going to happen. But I would love to see it. And, and I also think for Yuki's sake, Yuki is never, I mean, unfortunately, and we said this last week, does he deserve a chance to get into the rebel? I, I think he does. And mm-hmm. I think if things, if he was a different person <laughs> with the results he was getting, he would be looked into but I don't think it's ever going to happen. For, mm. I think he's in like purgatory. Yeah. He's like stuck in this RB hell, not yeah. hell. It's not bad. It's not, it's been good for him, but I don't, it's either this or it's like, no one else gives him the respect he deserves. Mm-hmm. No other team is going to, I don't think hire him or like get him for their team. Yeah. So it's like he either stays at RB or he's out of F1. That's my view on yeah. the situation, which I don't think is fair. I don't think so either. I brought this up on social media and I just want to like highlight it. And, Listen, like, are we people to continuously or to frequently highlight Esteban on this podcast? Like, Mm-mm. we don't typically do that. And not, do. not because we hate Esteban. It's just he's not someone we pay particular attention to. No, he's not on the radar. As much, right. But I do have to just say, Esteban has outqualified Pierre mm-hmm. every single race this year. He has perf- outperformed it. Now, a, a lot of people have said, well, Pierre has had issues with his car, which is true. He, yeah, but it doesn't know. matter. Facts are facts. Yeah. And listen, if we were going to do that game, we could do that for Everybody. Daniel. Yeah. We could do that for all the other people who have all these different reasons for why they're not out qualifying their teammate. And I just think it's interesting how we don't talk about the fact that Esteban is just very quietly dominating him yeah. this year. But if if it was different, if it was two different people, people would be like, oh my God. Yeah. So I just want to give Esteban his flowers yeah. Uh, I know Alpine's really not been good this year. And but I feel like that's probably part of why it's not right. being talked about totally. for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it, uh, he still it's not like deserves the... It's not like he's getting into Q3 or it's not like he's, you know, getting... He hasn't gotten points, so people are less likely to notice it. But mm-hmm. I think he's done super well and people don't talk about it. Yeah. Um, Charlotte Claire mm-hmm. qualified P8. And I'm just like, what's what's going on? I don't know. But I think the storyline's going to be the same this week. Oh, you mean have they did they should they have really gotten rid of Carlos? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um I just I once again, I would love to know why I continuously I, I okay, I didn't make the wrong choice in choosing to, to no. support Charlotte Claire, but I just I'd like a win somewhere. Not a I mean, I take a literal win, but like with the drivers that I am a fan of, like I just would like someone to a little bit of joy throw me a bone mm-hmm. like come on i understand people, you know and and at least friend- he wore the pants yeah <laughs> yeah you might just have to take off track victories instead i'm done with off track victories i'm done i don't need another magazine cover <laughs> i don't need another funny video i don't need you i know, know but you might just have to settle for someone that someone sent me do you know the account, account sunday scaries yeah Daniel was in it this week mm-hmm. and someone sent it to me and they're like, you know, Oh my God, he's like, he's in Sunday scaries. I don't <laughs> care. Like, but you do. No, I don't. Yeah. Like I don't care. You would rather 
victory on the track than him be a part of Sunday Scaries. <laughs> but it's fun that he's a part of Sunday Scaries. I, kind of. I, I I guess my point is just like I don't it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't move when the where it counts. needle for me yeah, at know. all, you know? Um I'm yeah, it's fun, but it's not worth it, I guess is sure. what I'm trying to say. Um and and our our friend Erin uh she was asking me how I felt about the race and she's like I I wish you lo- I wish you loved Carlos still. And yeah. I was like it's not that I, I, I mean Again, I don't dislike Carlos. I feel like I always need to say that just to like, you know, make sure people know. But do you think I, w- I want to be in this position? No. No. I would give literally anything. I'd cut off my right pinky toe. Don't be so to, serious. <laughs> to support the, the correct, quote unquote, correct choice. Like, you know, the person that continuously wins. The person that it's just a does shame well. you aren't born into it. Because it seems like when you're born into it, it just like works for you. I know. Eventually. And that's the thing. Eventually, maybe maybe in a couple of years, it's Ferrari's going to do what Red Bull's doing, and you're just going to win okay, all the time. Here's what I'm saying, though. Let's let's talk at the end of... Sure. By the end of this season, can the narrative, could Charles Leclerc have won yeah. a race, and Daniel's been on the podium, and Lewis wow. has won a race? You, know? you can certainly dream. Sure. That could happen. Is it likely? No. And... I just, I just want to say, I don't want to be the way that I am. I understand. I don't choose this life. This life has chosen me. I know. And I feel for you. Thank you. Now I do have a question next year when mm. your two faves are together, yeah. are you just going to be excited about the team's wins or are you going to, if Lewis is doing better than Charles, would that stress you good out? Question. You don't know yet? No, no. I've actually thought about this. <laughs> I, I, I've thought about who I would prefer to win a championship. Okay. If that was the case, if, if they were in contention for a championship. And I think ultimately I would want Charles mm-hmm. to win. Charles, Charles, my choice. Like yeah. if I were to rank Charles Leclerc is my favorite, like overall driver. Mm-hmm. If, if you're like, who's, if someone said to me, if, if a person came up to me and was like, who's your favorite F1 driver? I would say Charles Leclerc. Okay. Um, so ultimately I want Charles Leclerc to do well and that's who I, that's who I choose. I think it's, I'm hoping to look at it as like a win-win mm-hmm. that even if Charles doesn't succeed or he has yeah. an issue, it's like, well, at least Lewis totally, you know? Yeah. We'll wait and see. Yeah. We'll wait and see. Um, what was I? Oh, and then yeah. Great. Obviously great qualifying by Yuki to get into Q3 again. Also, his family was so proud. I feel yeah, like his, I've never seen them before. I haven't. I probably have, but I didn't his like parents process come to it. A, a few races. Actually, so there's cute. a cute photo. A few, maybe it was last season. Is, he, is that his sister? Season, yeah, he has a younger okay, sister. Okay, I didn't realize he had siblings. But there's a cute photo of um, Yuki's parents and Pierre's parents together. Oh, cute. Yeah. And of course, Yuki's dad has a lot of swag. He's wearing like a very, like a, like a mint colored yeah. jacket. Got a great head of hair. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So cute. I would love to know just like what, I mean, of course they love their son, but like yeah. Yuki is such a unique Japanese person. Like totally. He's just so different than your traditional Japanese person. Mm-hmm. And um, I would just love to know like what they think of that. Yeah. You know? Probably that he's crazy, but that they love him anyway. Right. Just exactly. like us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same love <laughs> that his parents have for him. You're crazy. The love that two strangers have for him. You're crazy, but we love you. <laughs> keep on keeping on <laughs> i also thought at one point like i can't remember if it was during qualifying or i think it was during qualifying of, like right when yuki beat out daniel and they like cut to liam and <laughs> you're just like man i think i just saw in his eyes like he's being a real champ but he was just like dude guys i can do better than that <laughs> yeah right exactly it's tough yeah um i i did read that in f1 and we, we talked about this before but F1 reported this, that Liam has been like guaranteed a seat for next year. Um, so curious. Which we like knew, we that, knew that basically. Um, it just poses lots of questions. Poses lots me. of questions. But um, so I think if, if you are a Liam supporter, like you, it's gonna you're going to get yeah, your time be around. Side. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Um, okay. To the race. So, <laughs> oh, I should also speak about my race watching experience. Um, oh, yeah. So did, did you end up watching last night? I'll tell you. Okay. Um, obviously, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You can't tell you how often I do that. So I texted him. I was very, probably because of my, like, I jumped awake 
the night before with qualifying and then I and then I didn't I like woke up kind of early and so I didn't sleep super well the the night before so I was so tired by like 10 p.m. I was like I think I'm I I gotta call it a night and go to bed and I'll wake up in the morning and watch it um then I texted you I was like I don't think I can watch it so I end up falling asleep at like and and my thought process was like I might end up just like waking up in the mm-hmm. middle of the night or like around the time that, that the race is on and then I can at least watch it then but I might as well get a few hours of sleep in anyway yeah I'm already gonna get up to watch it yeah you know? take a nap exactly so went to bed around 10 30 like super early and then woke up at like 1 30 and the race for us started at 12 mm-hmm. was, was supposed to so I was like oh I could you know I guess I'll just turn it on and just like see who won I figured it was like by the end of the race and I started from the beginning and uh I can't remember exactly how it was like presented to us, but I think they, I think, I think Crofty goes like, there's Alex and an RB in the wall. Uh huh. And I immediately was like, it's Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. I knew instantly. <laughs> instantly. I was yeah. like, there's literally no way it's not him. No. Like not even a shadow of a doubt that mm-hmm. it was Yuki. Not you know? never once did I think it was Yuki. No. And I, I would have been shocked if it was Yuki. Mostly actually. it was because I knew that Alex was like, Daniel was closer to right. Alex in the starting order than Yuki was. And then it was like, Daniel Ricardo. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> you know, this is good. Yep. This is, this is super Off to a swimming good. start. <laughs> I feel awesome about all of this. Um, and then there, you know, became the whole debate of whose fault was it? You guys, it was simply, an incident. it was, it was, I just said, I, I wrote, seemed just like an incident on the race. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was confirmed the stewards and everything said, ba- basically Daniel had Lance to his left and it was a left hander. So he looks over at, Lance to make sure he's not getting into his space sees that he has space and he veers over onto the racing line but he doesn't see Alex who's coming up behind him Alex kind of like clips his back wheel they both go tumbling into the wall Mm -hmm. and Daniel said so I guess everyone like in front of Daniel and Yuki started on mediums Mm -hmm. but everyone behind them were all on softs and Daniel and Yuki both started off on mediums and they both got like swallowed up at the start they both lost positions Mm -hmm. like Yuki was also didn't have a a good start and so they were like struggling for traction grip and they were kind of getting it it wasn't the best choice like if I think and actually in the race restart Yuki started back on softs Mm. um so probably not the best call by RB to start them off on the medium tires um and I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened if he was on softs but like maybe so yeah um but yeah just you know big bummer a big bummer and it just I mean Dan, every every driver you can look at and be like oh this happened to them and this happened to them and this happened to them and you know there's always things that go on but it really does feel like he just can't I catch know. a break I know. like him and Charles, he just he he can't get like any sort of momentum and yeah. like continuous um like one thing might go well for him and then it's like bad and right. then the next thing and it's just it's tough it's been tough yeah for him really 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 tough for him but these things happen lap one incidents so anyway um uh oh okay this is an off track thing but did you see lance during the red flag no like sitting in the garage no i fast forwarded it through because oh, okay. i watched it this morning i recommend giving that a, okay giving that a look okay it might change your feelings about lance a little bit in a positive way in a positive way okay do you want to give me any sort of understanding well i'll see if i can find it oh and i can show you the, okay the image he just looked oh good. hot yeah oh okay um, well i've seen him look hot before i know i know but I'm did just, you hear his radio towards the oh, end of the we'll, race we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we will get to that don't you worry um here i'll show you this also while we're doing this part because this is not really that big of a deal yeah, I mean, he definitely has moments. I'm digging his the length of his hair yeah, right now. Yeah, it's a good now. length. Yeah. yeah. I think someone in the fan amp chat was talking about that, that the length of his hair is... Looks like good. a lot of guys need a haircut right now, but his is working for him. Yep. Um, but the... Is it the tearaways? Is that what they're mm-hmm. called? I literally watched George rip one off his helmet and just throw it in there. And I'm like, George, you would be the first one to raise hell if one of those got stuck in your car well, somewhere. they do it all the time. Well, no, cut no it out. A, no one gives a shit. It's terrible for the environment and it's terrible for all of your and cars. they all get stuck in there. Treat people the way you want to be treated and just stick it on your lap or something. I mean, you it's... You have a little trash or can. It's, it's sticky. Can't you just put it on the inside of your car somewhere? I don't somewhere? know. I don't know. 
like it feels really distracting to throw it out anyway no. um so lance Lacau- looked hot today yes yeah, so that was good for him so then you have the the restart and, and, and i was also happy i didn't stay up because i would have had to then mm. deal with that right from, yeah you, you know, could just red flag fast, and fast I, yeah, forward a little like, bit who gives a fuck keep on you know and, and then of course the cameraman again there's like a shot of daniel looking at the screen and then they pan out liam's right behind daniel. yeah <laughs> he's um, always over his shoulder <laughs> um alpine had a bit of damage at the restart i think mm-hmm. pierre kind of ran into esteban just another day another fail team on team crime um the salver pit stops continue to just be mm-hmm. awful awful not as bad as like not a minute long bad they right. once were but still just like not that, McLaren those good. one second two seconds extra that it takes them that like makes a massive difference mm-hmm. in the race and their positioning and they're just like not helping themselves they're at really all. not it's bad joe obviously dnf'd he's had a rough go he really too. has i hope it's his it's, home race is better for him yeah cover magazine cover <laughs> off track wins <laughs> vogue china <laughs> yeah exactly um it is it does feel like right now in this season it feels like the drivers or the teams who like are having a tough time are just like continu- yeah. continuously having a tough time mm-hmm. and the drivers and teams that are doing well just like, are, like on, doing well yeah. it, it, it does feel like there's very consistent storylines of like very specific people and teams. Yeah. Like, Oh, we sucked again or, Oh, yep. We keep getting better. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of strange how that keeps happening. I know it's lame. Um, did you catch Lewis offering to let George buy? Yeah. What? Don't know. (laughs) That was weird. I know. I was like, excuse moi. (laughs) Pardon me. (laughs) Did I hear that correctly? I mean, I guess playing the team game, but it was, I was unexpected. I, I don't know that any driver, well, I mean, he, he did, he did do it, but like, I would never expect any driver to offer, offer to let a driver. Yeah. Through. I mean, maybe he just knew he was in a bad spot. Yeah. And like, I'm in a bad spot. Guys. And maybe for him mentally, it's better to offer if he feels like he's going to be asked to do it rather than be told to do it. I can right. see that being a, a game he plays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of charlotte claire well we weren't speaking of him but well, we, we were kind of have been um he had a really strong race he did a one stop whereas other drivers most everyone else did two stop and got himself from p8 to p4 mm-hmm. um driver of the day he you know there's there was a lot of talk about a lot of people upset and again the internet is a terrible place yeah but people yep, yep. mad about carlos passing charlotte claire for the final podium spot that's you how guys. it works, guys. It's called racing. And yeah. Ferrari didn't tell and him no. Charles was on, he like, Carlos definitely had the tire advantage. Charles had a one-stop race for him to go from P8 to P4 in, on, on a track that's not the best for overtaking. Um, he did a really good job. And I think, you know, is Carlos having more of the, as we said, momentum, all that stuff? Yeah. But 20 races to go. Yeah. We have to maintain our composure. We yeah. all do. Yeah. Um, strong, strong race by Checo has to be said. Qualified yeah. very well. Do you remember this was the race last year where Checo had like the terrible weekend. He DNF'd twice. It was the race yes. where he went back out. Yes. So that they wouldn't have to have the penalty the following week. Like yeah. it was a terrible weekend for him. And he's, you know, did very well yeah. got on the podium. And I think I'm curious what other people think and how you feel about it. But I think he's going to keep his seat. I, w- I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, I guess. I just don't know what, like, the r- other options really are. Right. And I, I mean, I do feel like it might be slightly too soon, and they sure. might come to regret the decision mm-hmm. to keep him, ultimately. But, yeah, I don't know. Because, you know, a- Alex's interview, when he was talking about what it was like for him driving at Red Bull, that came out fairly recently, and he was talking about, like, at the beginning of the season, it's okay, but as you progress through the season, it gets harder and harder to drive the car because of the setup that Max prefers. And sometimes I just wonder if like when we see Checo doing really well at the beginning of the year and he starts to kind of taper off, if that's part of like oh, the yeah, issues. For sure. And so again, it's kind of that thing where we're a few races in and we're at the beginning of the season, Checo's doing well. And like, will that taper off? I don't totally. know. Totally. Um, I also just want to say, I think Yuki's been listening to us because did you hear how complimentary he was after his pit stop? I was going to bring up that pit stop. That was like crazy. Like that four yeah, cars just, like, all came in at one time and RB did it fast and furious yeah. and got out there. And that, that was probably the reason that 
I mean, we don't know for sure, but I have to imagine that that was the reason he was able to get a point mm-hmm. because he came out in the front and then, you know, didn't have anybody to have to pass. Yeah. Um, yes. Very complimentary. And not that he's not complimentary often. It's just, we yeah. don't hear it on Thanks the radio guys. often. He did say that um, not cursing on the radio is harder than the, the G forces he takes. Um, I think that's a fair thing to say, especially since like, I always think too, like when he started to learn English, that's how he learned English is like curse. Like, you know, he's learning English from all these like engineers and mechanics who are just like cursing all this. It's just like part of part of the, it's how he knows the language. Yep. Yep. Um, he had obviously a very strong race first, you know, he got first time that he's gotten points in Japan, um and as we said he's just he's having the season that i think all these other drivers want to have which mm-hmm. is just consistency yeah he's getting into q3 he's getting points he's performing well he's not putting a foot wrong like people need to pay attention yeah lawrence stroll i would appreciate that Please. adopt him as your son let's well, just pretend I, I like yugi's dad and yeah, yeah no but i'm just saying for Lawrence, take him under your wing to, for him to then accept that you know we can have somebody else in the car that's not my son yeah no no sh- no hate to lance of course <laughs> um logan then went into the barriers yes he did all uh, on his own yikes yikes yep. yikes big yikes it's just oh yep and i feel like now with every passing week i just get more and more like just tense for them as a I team know. and it's just damn Ugh, sad at least he was able to like at least he didn't dnf yeah at least it's the little victories you guys i guess um so we no i'm <laughs> i mean is it i mean yeah i mean sometimes it's better sometimes i feel like it's better if you dnf and then like you didn't is it better to dnf like alex in the first lap or to come in last i don't know you know i, I don't guess know. when there's no points involved after 10 then know. it's hard to say um and then I loved the little battle at the very end between George and Oscar. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. Um, George passed Oscar on that final lap to get, I think it was P7, P6, mm. P7, P7, P7. Um, so congratulations to George and um, yeah, good job by him. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else from like the race specifically you wanted to touch on? I don't know if it was like the chaos of the last race that I remember, whatever, but like, I don't think I ever recognized how just calm and polite Japanese fans are They're in general. Best. I mean, everyone was just sitting calmly, quietly. Oh, also the video of the little boy who got on we'll stage. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. That's my, one of my, okay. Things. Um, great. I, I, I love all Stay their tuned. like <laughs> costumes that they wear. Like yeah. How they dress up as certain, you know, and like all the hats ways. that they made. Yeah. 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 I just, I, I think that would be a really fun race to go to because uh, I wouldn't feel scared for my well-being. Yeah. <laughs> like some other races where I'm just like, whoa, mm-hmm. you know, intense. <laughs> um, a little scary sometimes. I don't know if this light is like sunburning me or something. The t- top of my head like h- is burning. So. Do you want to turn off the light? No, I just keep touching my head. I felt like I had to bring oh. it to like <laughs> okay. attention as to why. Interesting. Um, loved seeing Max and Penelope. Yeah. Which during the um podium celebration did you was she the one yelling max yeah so cute and they like hugged after the race and max was asked about celebrating with kelly and p and max said that penelope asked why i b- retired in australia and i said well the car was on fire i think kelly is glad nothing happened today otherwise she might feel as if she brings bad luck Oh, Penelope would oh. feel that way because that was her first race oh no yeah <laughs> so I was wondering because I uh, when I saw her today I was like oh I feel like we've never seen her and that would be why yeah because there was no podium to celebrate for Max last time around exactly so happy for Penelope that she you know yeah got to enjoy that moment oh and she's a good luck charm and she they were is. skiing in Japan oh yeah, is yeah, that yeah, what you yeah. Said? did you tell me that no oh, no Crafty told me that <laughs> <laughs> classic mix up yeah sorry i always forget where my sources come from um yeah she's super cute yeah she's the sweetest i just thought that okay so yeah so i i wanted to add a category called it's a very creative title nice radio of the day (laughs) wow where we highlight a radio um that we enjoy and i wish we could add in the you know i know so they will have that 
Uh, and this week it's Lance Stroll. And I feel like you agree. Um, he said, quote, it's unbelievable. I can't do the voice. Do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? No, you like almost had it. You almost nailed the unbelievable. I can't. It's unbelievable. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm just going to. Just read it. It's read it in your Zoe voice. How bad our speed is on the straight, man. Like it's a different category. <laughs> I wrote voice crack. Unhinged. And I'm like, and see, that's the duality it? of Lance Stroll. Hot during the red flag. Icky during the radio. Is it? Are you slow on the straights? Because I'm looking at Fernando Alonso. Well, he was. He was. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, Lance is kind of giving... This is totally only for Hannah only, but he's kind of giving Chanko vibes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> for those who don't know, Jason Tardick, former Bachelor contest- contestant or Bachelorette contestant, uh, confused, was at the Vegas GP last yeah. year and thought that Checo's name was Chanko. Or calls him or Chanko. Calls Maybe him that's Chanko, his own like, nickname for and him. And it disgusted us so much. Oh, yeah. And it gave us, we just were, we couldn't believe that someone would say Chanko with their full chest. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's a whole chest, you guys. So let's go, Chanko! I was like, what? Like he's a WWE wrestler or something. <laughs> it was <just> terrible. <laughs> so, so anyway. Oh, God, um, what an earnest man. Oh, and, yeah. And I, I abs- Well, I shouldn't say I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of people that are super earnest. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard it's to relate. It's really hard to relate. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, let's get to but, our fans. But weren't they, hold on, because weren't they saying that, um, I think Crofty told me this, but um, that the setup of the, like that uh, Fernando's car was set up more for qualifying, so that's why he was faster on the straights than Lance was. Is that a real thing? Oh, or I don't know if he was, um, I don't know if that was why he was better on the straights. Mm. Per- perhaps so. Perhaps. Um, fan info. I'll, I'll share my fan first since you kind of already brought it up, but it was George... Sorry wrestle with the little boy it was during like the fan yeah. forum thing the pep rally the pep rally and uh he brought him up up on stage and they did the little t pose together and it was so cute and i loved it it was just so sweet yeah um my fan is bernie collins i love anytime i hear her voice she's so relaxing she's brilliant she's yep. so smart but this, I don't know if the episode came out recently, but I saw the clips of her on the Fast and Curious podcast, which is hosted by Greg James from the BBC, who I love from the One Direction days. So I feel a kinship to him, even though he doesn't know who I am and I don't really listen to him at, ever. Um, but I, it was just interesting. The clip that I saw was her talking about when she was working for Austin Martin and that like basically... I don't think I understood this, but like one ear was information for Lance. The other ear was information about Sebastian Vettel. And it's just not talked about enough how impressive that job is to like be so dialed in to two people and to like constantly be getting information in and to know that like, okay, if someone's over here, it's Lance. I feel like she, I don't know if she did left for Lance and right for Sebastian or something, but anyway, I just think she's really impressive and I'm really glad that we get to hear her talk a lot i her i think it was lando maybe and on a podcast maybe last year or something I, I i could be wrong about who it was but talking about his how difficult it is to be a race engineer specifically mm-hmm. for a driver because you're constantly getting information you're getting information from all these different places you're having to analyze data you're having to re- relay information back to to your driver keep it calm what they what what do they need to know what do they not need to know mm-hmm. i mean we we often hear drivers get a little testy with their engineers yeah like you know stop talking to me mm-hmm. or whatever but the amount of stuff they have to juggle and deal with in a race is like so impressive. really impressive yeah and they're all very 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 smart also gp telling max i told you so today was pretty fun yeah i enjoyed that um my foe is obviously the Daniel and Alex incident. Mm-hmm. It just, it, they both have had, like, I wouldn't even say, I mean, maybe you could say Daniel's start has been bad. I don't even know if I would say it's been like bad. Like his races have been fine. He just like, hasn't qualified super well. So then he's like never putting him in the right, like he's always starting off kind of on the back foot, but they both just have had like weird starts to their mm-hmm. season. And I just, I like need them both to have a better yeah. better go yeah and it just you never want to see i mean obviously anytime a 
a driver has a bad crash that causes a red flag that, that's never good and i'm glad people did say like <laughs> it's not funny but okay people be. were like at least daniel got through this with both of his wrists <laughs> honestly fair and i'm like i guess <laughs> yeah. can you imagine <laughs> oh. um so of, of course like that they're fine and safe and okay is all great but it just this is not it's not what you want yeah uh your phone so as a person who lives most of her life on the side of delusion Mm -hmm. um this happens to me a lot and i don't know if this has ever happened to you i know this has happened to you but sometimes i have dreams about people and then i wake up with actual feelings for them which i find really frustrating and difficult to deal with (laughs) so last night i had a spicy dream about lewis hamilton and i woke up with a lot of romantic feelings (laughs) towards lewis hamilton today and it's probably going to last about seven business days. <laughs> and um, it's just really tricky when that happens because it's so obnoxious. And like I know is stupid, but I also feel it with my full chest. So and and for those who maybe don't know, like you're not you like Lewis fine, but you're yeah. not like the biggest Lewis Hamilton fan. No, I mean, he's obviously so beautiful and like I appreciate him a lot. Yeah. I mean, like of all of the, the people that I was going to have a dream yeah. about, that yeah. was not on my bingo right. card. And then I woke up um, having a massive crush on Lewis Hamilton with like real feelings because it felt really real. Well, and there it was wild i mean let's hope it stays you yeah we'll see the lh train i just i don't like having feelings about people that i don't know personally yeah <laughs> it's really overwhelming I, and i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it um thank you for sharing that very no, vulnerable story thank you for listening <clears throat> um it was a great dream though <laughs> <laughs> i mean 10 out of 10 dreams yeah dreams are fun um so just a quick recap on our uh, drivers for the week. You were very close to getting that Daniel point for his, if he had gotten into Q3, mm-hmm. very close. I was not close to getting anything at all. Yeah. Um, so bummer, both of us, zero points this weekend. Um, but, but that's okay. We're going to bounce okay. back stronger. And let's draw for, uh, I'm going to do a little yeah i and i told zoe this earlier i'm I'm nervous that because i I also the last race i had max and he dnf'd so i'm hoping i haven't started some creepy trend um creepy yeah it's not creepy but all right let's see here okay you can't get valtteri again for those who i know and for those who um i was or daniel again i mean i got daniel oh redraw thank god i just want to leave it out so i don't draw it again on accident i was like whose name starts with a d (laughs) Daniel. Okay. I'm scared. Fernando. Oh, that's fun. That is fun. I'll keep this out while you draw. Drum roll. I can't do it. It just sounds like a helicopter. Checo. Oh, clackers. I think this is a good. This is a fun combo. This is a good matchup. Okay, let me write this down. Nando and clackers. Um, Nando and clackers. Let me see here. Chanko. Where Chanko. <laughs> Let's go, Chanko. Um, I got it. Oh, here we are. F1 draft. All right. Daniel Valtteri. Zero, zero. Unfortunately, sad day. Um, China. We've got Hannah with Fernando. I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's a good one. And Zoe with Chanko. That should be a good one, too, for you. Yeah, hopefully. Let's hope yeah. he continues the good trend. Um, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Um, okay. We got I'm, some cues. We have some cues. Um, my finger has lost circulation. Oh no. That's okay. Um, okay. Someone messaged us. This wasn't in the um, Fan Amp channel, but someone asked us to talk about, they're a new F1 fan, and mm-hmm. they want us to talk about Tire Deg. Ooh. Um, which, you know, we're not like the experts on tire deg and all that stuff, but I guess the simplest way to talk about it is obviously three different compounds, soft, medium, hard in the traditional, you know, non wet Mm -hmm. tire, uh, options. And basically your soft tire is your quickest tire, but it's going to degrade the the fastest. Mm -hmm. It's like, basically, if you think about it, it's like thickness of your tire so like if your tire is super super thick it's gonna take a lot longer Longer. to be quick but it's gonna last a lot 
longer. And so your soft tire is your fastest, but it's going to go away the fastest. Mm -hmm. Medium is in the middle. And then the hard is the hardest. Um, And so when it comes to tire deg, they, they are basically trying to figure out how long can they go on these tires without them completely falling off. And that's why oftentimes you'll see in races, like if, someone's on a hard tire and then another driver's coming through on a soft tire, like they're probably going to be able to pass the hard tire initially, but Mm -hmm. then if the soft falls away because of the tire deg, then the tire is like not good anymore. Then Mm -hmm. the hard could pass them back. I know that's not a very good. And the hotter the track, the quicker the tires deg. (laughs) Deg. Yeah. Um, But uh, to be totally honest with you, there's a lot of people on TikTok who explain this very well. Neha is one of them. She is great at Um, that. She has a lot of good videos talking through um, actually a lot of the um, intricacies of like downforce, overtake. um, What's the other one? Uh, Undercut? Yes. And then tire deg. She's got a lot of good videos. Um, But yeah, I'm definitely not the girl. (laughs) So we did a great job and I could not do better. Literally. I mean, yeah, it's, and, and you'll often hear like people will be better on their tires and other drivers. And it's all about, and that's, this is why like drivers when they're in a race and it depends so much on who's behind them, how far away is the person behind them? How close are they to the person in front of them? They will be easier on their tires in order to make their tires last longer but if they're having to like race somebody or defend somebody that they're going to eat up their tires much faster Mm -hmm. so it's like you have to pick and choose when is the time to like attack when's the time to be more conservative um are you doing a one stop are are you trying to do a one-stop race for example charlotte claire was very good on his tires this weekend because he only changed them once as opposed Mm -hmm. to other drivers to change them twice so he had to be a lot more conservative over the course of the race yeah there's a lot of intricacies involved Indeed. Uh, um, someone also asked if we thought that Daniel was going to be in Formula One in 2025. I am cautiously optimistic. I, I obviously, okay. I first of all think it's still too soon to tell for sure. But if it's continuing the way it's continuing now, no, he won't be. Mm-hmm. Because Liam's going to get a seat and Yuki's performing better than Daniel. So therefore, Daniel will not have a seat. But obviously, you know, we could be having a different conversation by June. Yeah. Things could turn around and be and be different. I think the difficult part is it's looking like neither of them. It, Yuki is not going to get the Red Bull seat. I, I don't think. Right. That would be if Yuki got the Red Bull seat, they could just bring Liam into Yuki's seat and then mm-hmm. bada boom, bada bing. But if they're not going to promote Yuki to the Red Bull and they're going to either retain Checo or put somebody else in, which at this point I feel like. I don't know who they put in. Um, then it's Yuki and Daniel fighting it out for one seat. Yeah. And if Yuki is consistently performing very well and Daniel is not, they're going to keep, they're going to keep Yuki. Yeah. So I, I don't, I would say right now it's like 50, 50 as to whether Probably. or not something like that, maybe even less than that. And pe- cause people have been like, are, are, you know, how do you feel about it? And I, I mean, we've been through this before. Like, I actually enjoyed Formula One in a lot of ways a lot more yeah. last season without him being in Formula One than I do now. Um, Less stress for you. And it's just more like, it's just more fun. Like yeah. I, I, I have a good time. And, and so my feeling is it's kind of like win-win is a weird way of describing it. But like either he does well enough to get the seat for next year or he's not, he, he, he doesn't perform. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, that's fine. He will, will get a, a different person in and... I don't, I don't want him in Formula One if he's not performing well. Agreed. So I just would feel bad if, if the year keeps going like this, it would make me sad that like, that's how he goes out of the sport. Um, so for all of our sakes, I hope that yes. this luck is going to turn around yes. soon and quickly. Yeah. It, it would be tough for like, I don't know how much he cares about legacy or whatever, but it would be tough for his yeah. legacy. Um, I think, but most athletes have some s- sort of, wanting to have one yeah yeah yeah. uh so anyway we'll have to wait and see again you know too early and and rb have luxury of time they don't have to make any they i i feel like they're not going to make a decision until like september october Mm -hmm. as to who gets that second seat or the other seat because it's not like 
there's a ton of people that are like clamoring to get right. either of their drivers, aka I don't think anybody is at this point in, in in time, and they're not at risk of like they they can wait and fully evaluate the whole situation and yeah. see they have the luxury of time exactly. Whereas other teams don't have that, so and neither does Carlos. <laughs> yeah, I. I feel like now I feel like Carlos is going to, I think Rebel's going to resign Checo. Mm-hmm. I think Carlos is going to um, sign with Mercedes. Oh, you do? I do. And I think Fernando will stay with Aston Martin. Um, and I, I, I know both Alpines. I think their contracts are both up. I think they'll end up resigning. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I mean, maybe not, but I kind of feel like that's the way it's going to go. I think Ollie Bierman will replace. Um, well, actually, people are talking about Nico going to Audi. Oh, okay. And it being Nico and who is the other driver? I can't remember. Like, I don't know. I don't know that Joe's going to get resigned. Yeah. I don't think Logan's going to get resigned. No. Um. So I think I think Ollie will will get in. Obviously, Liam will get in. Um. So I do think we'll see some rookies next mm-hmm. year, which I think will be good because we. It'd be, it's always fun to have some new people involved in the sport. What are your thoughts? Will Buxton on the red flag said that he thinks, was it Ollie that he thought was going to Mercedes and then Carlos would go to Sauber? I, f- I feel like it wasn't Ollie. It was someone else. It was another rookie though. Kimmy Antonelli. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think with Kimmy, I, I'm, I, he's so young. He's 18 mm. and I feel like it's more likely that he, I, I, I mean, I guess I think he's going to test actually in the 2021 Mercedes coming up here soon. Mm. But I feel like it's more likely that he would take Logan's seat. Yeah, that I was gonna say, and, the and then Williams have like first. a couple years of of getting you know himself acclimated, and then go to Mercedes, mm-hmm. um, which maybe is a reason why Carlos wouldn't want to go to Merck because he's, he's like just gonna get the boot a stopgap, yeah, you know. Right. But it's also like, well, what if he outperforms George? Yeah, right. You know, it, it's more likely that he does. He has a better chance at competing with George than he does with competing against like yeah. Um, Max, though, would Aston Martin rather have Carlos Sainz than Fernando? Like, there's lots of things to consider curious. here. Curious, curious. So, um, tell me we have it. Tell me we have it. Um, so, yeah, that is that for today's show, Japanese GP recap. Uh, make sure to stay tuned for our pyramid ranking that will come out tomorrow. Um, we don't exactly know what we're going to do next week. We might have a special guest. Um, we're figuring out next week's plans, mm-hmm. but we'll, there will be an episode. So fear not. Um, and then we've got China. We have China the same weekend. We have a new Taylor Swift album. I keep forgetting about the new Taylor Swift, which album. is going to be fantastic. She, um, not to side note it, but she came out. So basically like she has these five different, versions i think of her album that she's putting out that are supposed to like represent the different stages of grief so Mm -hmm. like denial acceptance blah 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 blah. and she put out on apple music this past week uh different playlists that accompany each stage of grief and she like put her put her songs into these different categories she put lover in denial whoa i know (laughs) I know. <laughs> That's crazy. I know. <laughs> like shots are about to be fired. Oh, wow. Uh, this is going to be so good. Also, can I just say <laughs> as um, an Apple music girl and not a Spotify girl, which I know is so polarizing. It makes me really yeah, happy that she's an Apple gal. Mm-hmm. Cause we don't get a lot over there. No. Um, we have like a very lame version of Spotify, Sp- Spotify, <laughs> Spotify wrapped. Um, it's not the same. They basically just send you a playlist of the songs you listen to the most. It's, I don't know. It isn't yeah. the same. I definitely urge everyone. If you're a Taylor Swift and go and check out those individual ones and see what songs she's, so she put her discography in these in playlists. These different playlists. And then I'm assuming it's a smart idea that once the album comes out, then She'll- those will go in the different playlists. Oh good. But Yeah denial Lover in denial that is wild i know she's such it's crazy so brilliant it's crazy <laughs> so i'm here for the joe alwyn downfall mm-hmm. i've never been a fan so yeah um, two thumbs down <laughs> respectfully <laughs> um not that this is not that we have to end with joe joe alwyn um anything else you want to add before we wrap it up uh no but um I, well yes uh, speaking of joe alwyn taylor swift pipeline jason kelsey was at wrestlemania oh. <laughs> it's the best video i've ever seen um 
to if you have any interest in that i would check it out because he just like hopped over he just like really carried himself well at wrestlemania so um i also want to just say a quick thank you to everyone who um rated us on spotify when i made my call we're yes uh, we're over 900 we're almost (gasps) to a thousand goal to get to is is to get to a thousands if you haven't rated us on spotify please go ahead and do so so we can get to that thousand mark we'd really appreciate and also if you haven't left us a review on apple podcast we'd also love that really appreciate that as well and even if you are a listener only friend we're glad you're here don't go anywhere but if you want to just get on youtube one day and subscribe to the channel just for funsies yep We'd love for you to do that. We'd love it. And we'd appreciate you so much. Exactly. Um, Thanks, guys, for listening. And Mm -hmm. we'll see you guys next week. Enchanté. Enchanté.